in terms of what the uh, the users might be bringing back into the office. Um, we've also seen a sharp rise in ransomware. Um, you know, even you know the SolarWinds stuff. Like there was there was a lot of stealth and persistence and and thought given to lateral movement uh, that can behave very differently if it's on the same local network um, to, to you know what it's capable of doing if it's if it's connected via a VPN. So. Yeah, all of those all of those kind of scenarios, I think, are, are relevant to play through. Like the challenge is, and again, it comes to this kind of core idea of you know creating a set of hypotheses for, for threat hunting that are most relevant to your organization and burning down through those. Because yeah, you know, part of the goal is almost to prove a negative, um, which you can't do. Like you, you you're trying to get to a positive as quickly as you possibly can, which means you have to think about the threat. You have to think about what's actually likely, which is going to depend on. You know what you're doing as an organization um and and what you're doing it with is now the time to start a new threat hunting program or is waiting until everyone gets back the time to I, do it? yeah no i think now is the right time to start you know table topping and thinking that stuff through at the very least like if, if you actually you know execute on threat hunting off, off the back of that and try to you know prove the thesis true or false um Again, it, it depends on you know what all else you're trying to deploy resource on as a, as a security team. And if you're not doing the basics properly, then maybe don't divert attention from getting that stuff sorted out first. But <clears throat> yeah, the whole idea of just being able to think through like what the different uh, threat scenarios look like, um, it's it's a good time to actually stop and think about that right now because you're absolutely right. You know, <clears throat> I think the general consensus. Um, even where I am right now in Australia, is that like the pandemic is rounding a turn. We're going to start to return to whatever we end up calling normal in the future. Um, so now is a is a pretty good time to start thinking about you know what's happened over the past twelve months that we might have missed, um, and then also you know what do we expect to see um, as a threat over the next six to twelve months as we kind of adjust to that kind of new way of doing stuff. Um, I'm sure right now the the main <clears throat> threat that people will be hunting for will be solar winds dependent, um, or at least the that that chain of uh, all of those all of those different uh, linked together Russian attacks. Yeah. Um, usually, almost always, uh, I, I people tend to start with the assumption that you don't need to start with the APTs, that it's probably the criminal. Are we at yeah. the rare moment where maybe start with the APT? Uh, yeah, that's that's an interesting one because I think the, you know, it, it's sort of still coming out in terms of how widespread actual targeted um, use of, of the attack was. And, and like the initial stuff was, was, you know, pretty focused, you know, in terms of how it was reported out on, on federal government targets and, and whatnot. Um, but because it's a supply chain attack and you're, you're owning the supply chain, you kind of catch up a whole bunch of other folk in the process. Um, it's a, it's a interesting question to answer, I think, you know, in that, like, is APT, I mean, what, what SolarWinds demonstrated is that APT can get to everyone and they will. 